It's close
Vincent, Maas, major in the Dutch Marine Corps. Can you spell it please? V-I-N-C-E-N-T and Maas is uh, M-A-A-S. Okay, and you are a major? Yes, yes I am. EMS. It's an infantry squadron, uh, part of uh, one MCG battalion, the Dutch battalion uh, who conducted this exercise in combat uh, town, this right, together with the Canadian battalion. So I'm one of the subunits uh, in that battalion. Now, we, have, we are 1st uh, Battalion uh, Royal Marines. And in that battalion, in, instead of a Dutch uh, infantry uh, company, there's now also a British uh, company participating. So we have uh, a Dutch company and a British one under, under one uh, combined uh, um, battalion staff uh, run by the Dutch. Okay. Yeah, last night we conducted a landing on Red Beach, did an insertion, and yeah, at four o'clock this morning we'll uh, conduct a raid on uh, Combat Town to clear combat town of uh, any insurgents which were here. And after that we did it again for the VIP visitors, uh, only in a very short matter of time. So this morning it took three and a half hours, well coordinated, and yeah, now we only had a limit, limited uh, amount of time, so we had to speed it up a little. Uh, yeah, it helps. It's, uh, it's nice uh, to uh, work with uh, coalition forces, 
So you see what kind of equipment we, uh, each uh, unit has. You can cross train. For the LCAX, for example, we never train with LCAX. We have uh, other landing crafts, but also procedures are different. Procedures on an American ship is different than the procedures on a Dutch uh, vessel. And yeah, if you're going to deploy, and you might end up on a different coalition ship. So training is always good. Also part of that training, uh, which we gain over here now. Did you like the LCAX? Yeah, yeah, I like them a lot. They're awesome. Wish we had them. Dry landings. Oh yes. Uh, what are some of the? Especially the combined part. So yeah. working together with uh, different uh, different uh, units, different forces, and yeah, it's always good to see different training locations like this urban town. If you only train in your own country, yeah, you, you know each location, and this is a challenge. Nobody of us has been here before, so yeah, this is a completely new uh, experience for us, new challenge. No, I'm with the man. Um, I'm there to lead the man into battle, so I'm just a you know, very little behind them to just to oversee, but still uh, in front with the platoons uh, conducting the attack. Awesome. As, as no normal operations we run normally? Yes. Well, for example, uh, the, the serials which are called on, on the ship are different than our serials. So the first time it doesn't all go smooth as, as, as our normal routine does. So we have to get used to each other. The ship has to get used to a foreign unit being on board of the ship, and we have to get used to the, the serials which the ship addresses. So that's, that's the challenging part of, of working together in a coalition. What are some of the other Maybe language sometimes. Uh, we have five different units over here. Well, there's a Norwegian platoon integrated in my company. We have a bridge platoon. Well, we work together with the Brits a lot. Um, so you also have to link up uh, signalers to make sure everybody speaks on the same sheet. That's a, that's a challenge quite uh, quite often, and also uh, yeah, we have different kit. So our radios systems also have to match. Uh, yeah, that might be a challenge sometimes. Well, I think over here it's a bit bigger. Okay. The amount of LKX I saw, it's amazing. And we have only a very small Marine Corps compared to the U.S. Marine Corps. So yeah, it's it's good to participate in big exercises like that. So you can also see the the whole bigger scheme of maneuver. That's a, that's a nice experience. Well, if you're going to be operating in a big environment uh, like Iraq or in Afghanistan, uh, it's important that you also get to see the big picture. And you can only train it in a big operation like, uh, like this. So that's, that what we, that's what we gain from it. My unit, well, I think that was for the most guys the first time they've been on a foreign ship. Uh, I have yeah, qu quite some new young guys, so that's, that's nice. For them also the first time to be in the States and train in a facility like this. And well, just good, good, nice training, good facilities. That's what we, yeah, on, on our level, gain from it. I like the amphibious bit and uh, and the urban ops, which we did today, and hopefully we can uh, conduct tomorrow. Uh, that's uh, yeah, that's that's what we prefer. Besides being uh, aboard on the ship, uh, that's a lot of staff planning, and also has to take place, of course. But yeah, my guys like to run ashore and uh, conduct raids like like we did today. Captain and. Uh Platoon Commander, 2nd Anglico. Uh, McCabe, MCCABE. Thomas. Uh, today we did a uh, combined coalition assault on Combat Town with a uh, Canadian battalion and a Dutch battalion. The Canadian battalion had one company from Canada, one company from Spain. The Dutch battalion had one company from the Netherlands and one company from the United Kingdom. Uh, the best thing is we can actually see how other NATO forces operate. Um, you know, from my perspective, seeing the JTACs operate, you know, we we get to the same end state, but some of the techniques we use for um, actually controlling where the aircraft go. Um, we use different, different terminologies, slightly different procedures, but overall uh, we get to the same end state and uh, we, you know, we know what each other's doing. So it just, just helps build um, interoperability, interoperability because we can see how their um, techniques work, they can see how our techniques work, and you know, we can kind of just learn from each other. Uh, you take your time to think about it. So. Yeah, that's, Aside from being on a ship for two weeks. I mean, I'd say the biggest thing would be uh, we kind of assume that everybody has the same way of planning and the same way of operating. 
uh, especially con since most of the units here speak English, but um, just the what it, some of the considerations they have uh, for ROE and how they plan missions uh, is a little different. It's kind of good to see that way when we do plan missions in the future, we can kind of expect, you know, you know that they their planning cycle might be a little take a little longer, or uh, they may have certain considerations um, that we may not you know think of or kind of uh, put as much thought into as some of the other. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd say you know for the past 13 years we've been operating um, together with other coalition forces in Afghanistan is you know. As funding goes down, I think you know, we're just going to see more and more interoperability as nations don't have as much to spend on defense spending. We're going to have to start working together more for, uh, for future operations to you know, have the same you know, security requirement. Uh, I mean, really, you're not going to, unless you practice it, you're not going get, to get better at it. So, you need, um, you can read doctrine and you can read how they operate, but until you actually do it, you're not going to really be able to operate well with another country unless they come out and, you know, we, we work together on operations like this. Um, I mean, really, the only way we're going to get better at, you know, fighting as a coalition or with allies is if they actually come out and we train side by side on ranges and you know plan together and uh, really work together for an extended period of time just so we can uh, you get fully acclimated to working with them and um, really seeing how they they think how they operate and employ their forces and I think just the uh, I mean, the coalition force was able to I mean, they had a very mixed planning staff of Dutch can, Dutch Canadians Spanish Italians and um, they showed that they could, you know, plan to uh, execute side by side with Americans, with Americans, and uh, achieve, you know, successful results on every mission. Uh, Communication-wise, was a little tough just because uh, for a lot of the classified information, um, you know, they they don't have access to SIPR, so. Uh, Getting all the information that would be accessible to U.S. forces took a lot longer. It's got to get go through uh, foreign disclosure officers and other stuff. That that was probably the toughest thing was communications, getting getting a lot of the info for um, for the coalition forces in a timely manner. What was your job during this exercise? Uh, my job was to be a liaison for the Dutch. Uh, fire cell for a lot of their supporting arms for aviation assets, artillery, naval gunfire. Why was that important? Uh, it's important because I mean, I mean, fire is a critical aspect of any military operation. So, um, and additionally, they use slightly different doctrine than us. So, just to uh, For them, it was just making sure, you know, what they wanted. I was able to translate into American terminology for the uh, for any American supporting units. Uh, for today's plan of attack, they started from the south. They uh, got all the forces in the tree line. Then they did a show of force with a Harrier uh, attack jet, and then uh, used smoke. Smoke screen to uh, begin the attack. Uh, after that, they uh, cleared from south to north through the town, uh, systematically working through the compounds, and then uh, had uh, two Cobra attack aircraft overhead for any close air support requirements. I think it, I think it's big because we were you know doing an amphibious operation with coalition forces. So, and then I know the. The Dutch are starting to buy amphibious ships, so uh, just building the relationships we're doing. Uh, I mean, it's been a, it's been a good learning experience for me. It's um, first time I've worked with uh, 
Oh, I can't say it's the first time. It's the first time I've um, gotten work with the Dutch. I've worked with the British in the past, and then um, Georgian forces. But um, really, any any foreign country you get to work with just really uh, kind of expands the way you think and you know, just what kind of your understanding of other military capabilities are.